This is Brother Craig. And I have a great guest today. Her name is Maya Regler, and she is from Sydney, Australia. And she is a great blessing. And many of you have listened to her before when, we, when we've had her on. And I just want to uh, thank you for joining us today. Now, she's from Sydney, Australia. And if you weren't with me the last time, you missed something very important, which we're going to dig into a little bit more today. I heard some things I'd not heard before that were fascinating to me, and I felt like we just scratched the surface. So without much delay today, I asked her to be with us again and uh, so praise God for this time together. Before I get into that, let me just say to you, this will be another video in the series, the title of which asks a very important question. What have we learned? What have we learned? And I'm talking about in the last year and a half or so. See, I'm more convinced than ever that we need to have the discussion about we, primarily the body of Christ, have learned in the last 18 months. But this isn't just for our benefit. Of course, it's better to do better as we get older. But this isn't just for us. It's for the next generation. So we can teach them in such a way that they don't have to go through the same things that we did during this very stressful time that we've gone through. Now, full disclosure, what I really want to do is sort of get ahead of the curve a little bit. The danger is not passed yet. We know just recently from, you know, as I was thinking about the fact that we have in the United States, we just went through a time of sort of celebrating, if that's the right ter term, commemorating 9-11, September 11th, 2001. It was the 20th anniversary just recently. And the banner slogan became never again. But no one was saying that before September 11th. They only said it afterward. Well, supposing you knew it in, in advance that 9-11 was coming, that it was, co that it was going to take place, and I'm talking about even before the da disaster came, what would you do? What you would do is speak to people in such a way that they would be prepared for the new era in world history that we were about to begin. I hope you're tracking with me here. I think it's obvious that we're about to enter a new era. Now, is it gonna be good or is it gonna be bad? Personally, I think it's gonna be very good. However, it's important that we have never again thinking. In other words, we can teach our children and grandchildren how to avoid going into this stressful time like we experienced in 2020 and 2021. And that's why we're doing this series called what have we learned? Now, as a reminder, I have another, I have a number of other videos in this series, and you can check those out on my YouTube channel or go to BitChute. Uh, they are in addition to all the Bible teaching videos that I have on both of those platforms. And by the way, if something should happen to my YouTube channel, thank God, at least there's BitChute. So praise God. Maya, uh, so <laughs> yeah, there you are. Praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to put you alongside me here uh, for those that are watching <clears throat> the recording as, as opposed to watching the live version. So there you are. And yeah. I want to welcome you once again. Uh, by the way, before I get into my discussion with Maya, Maya I want to apologize to this audience for the audio quality in my last video. And we were discussing a number of things with our guests. Uh, come to find out, all it was, was a switch on my audio interface. And I could have sounded a lot better. I tried to clean it up as much as I could. I know you don't want to be distracted by extra sounds uh, when you're trying to glean information. Uh, you want to hear things clearly. But I think we've got that straightened out for today. And so Maya, who is she? Maya Regler. She is a mom in Sydney, Australia. She's a worship leader. She, she's a researcher. And she's somebody that God uses to speak truth, not just to power, but just speak truth to, to people so they can navigate the things that we're going through. So um, 
Don't tell, I want to say this again. Don't tell me that one person can't make a difference. Maya right there with her kids at home is making a difference. And so we appreciate you being with us once again, Maya Regler. Amen. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, some people probably uh, that are watching this right now, they follow you on your Facebook page and you are co- you're posting material on there all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, you're getting ready to release some books and uh, that's that sounds like an exciting venture and I think people need to read them. Um, I haven't read a manuscript or a chapter or anything. I'm not saying it because of that. I'm just saying I know from who you are thus far that uh, you're, you're going to present some information which is going to make a difference. So we appreciate that very much. And I was just uh, wondering if uh, you could begin by bringing us up to speed on what's going on down there, not just in New South Wales, where you are, but in Australia at large, because I think that the nation of Australia is very important in the overall scheme of things. So if you could just talk about that a little bit, I would appreciate it. Yeah, I understand that um, the world is watching us closely with supposedly the, the, the NWO guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, congratulations. Country. Yeah. yeah yes yes so um at the moment um as as you would probably see in your news um where we've got uh closed borders within our own country and um states have closed their borders to the rest of the country so people mm. are not able to freely travel through australia um Sydney is still on lockdown, but expected to, uh, they're they're easing, starting to ease off on restrictions now, but we've been in lockdown for nearly three months now. So um, that's that's been an interesting time. I believe that uh, with vaccine mandates that have come into uh, no jab, no pay, basically. No jab, no job. Um, if you don't have uh, the vaccine by a certain date, you will be out of, you will be unemployed. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand something similar is occurring in the US as well. I believe that's likely occurring in other parts of the world or too, but um, it hasn't gone over well in some parts. So mm-hmm. France, the people have risen up quite strongly and Greece has risen up and then Sweden yes. is just, a, yes. they've gotten rid of all of their coronavirus, they've gotten rid of everything. They've, they've just thrown it all out and it's been downgraded to a uh, flu, <laughs> which is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> well, it, it had like, to be, oh, no. it had to be, yeah, it had to be upgraded <laughs> before it could be downgraded. That's right. That's right. So um, there's court cases here of um, employees that are seeking reprieve from the courts from having to have a vaccine against their will. And today will be the second day of hearings. Um, And then in the last week, uh, as far as I'm aware, 200 cases are pending against the state Mm. so there's been another 200 court filings to uh, basically target our health minister for the state who is the one that has made all of these um, public health orders which have restricted our movements which have you know the vaccine mandates the there's lots of lots of things going on there so um but the the awesome news is if even one wins we win yes we win so we only need one win but i believe personally that it will all boil down to the framing of the argument from a legal standpoint because the judge can only work with what is the law 
what does the law say? So he's not interested in conjecture or just being yeah. overwhelmed with a lot of information. He needs the things that say that's against the law and why, you know, so it, it's going to be, int- I th- I'd say today will be an interesting day. So I yeah. hope, I hope all of the law teams and the law firms that are involved bring their A game. He's a fair judge. I, I believe that he's a fair judge, but he can only rule according to the law. He cannot rule according to feelings or, or yeah, his yeah. emotions. Yeah. So, uh, it's like give what, what, him the right argument right. and then add with supporting evidence. And I don't believe they can lose. Mm-hmm. But if, if they if they don't, they could blow it he will rule in a fair manner so he's not um fair judge okay like corrupt or i i don't i don't know for sure but yeah. a, like yeah. a lot lot of courts are supposedly you know that they, they are brought in by politicians and so mm-hmm. they they tend to answer to their masters um and i'm, I'm i just don't have that sense with with this this judge i believe that he if the argument is framed correctly he has no choice but to rule correctly mm-hmm. you know so um yeah it's going to be an interesting day and then we've got melbourne who uh, you know the, their their premier is basically breaking like he he is he is something else entirely so he's got the people on lockdown down there they've been in lockdown for the majority of the pandemic so he has destroyed his own state mm-hmm. yeah. small businesses it's all like it's just horrendous and they've got brutality from the police occurring there uh citizens are being harmed um and and it's not justifiable the force the excessive force that has been used against australians is just appalling so um and i believe that the u.s is actually calling for the u.n to get involved to sanction the police in Victoria for their treatment of Victorian citizens. And I I agree. I believe that there does need to be sanctions brought. Um, But he, yeah, he's definitely a law unto himself and he's blaming Victorians for the rise in case numbers. But uh, it's just, how can they be at fault? You know, it's like that's not the people's fault at all. So it's just crazy. So yes, that's what is occurring down here in in Australia, and we wait with bated breath. Yeah, really, yeah. To see what the outcome will be of um, these pending court cases, but yes. we're believing and hoping for good news. You know, so. Yeah. Um, that's all we can do that is all we can do but uh apparently they said that um the vaccine mandates because they were trying to bring in a vaccine passport and Mm -hmm. it's been determined that on december the 1st we're all going to be free regardless of vaccination status so um the vaccine passport will last for all of five weeks (laughs) Which doesn't make yeah, so, any so if you sense. hide out for five weeks, you're probably safe. Yeah, and <laughs> then and then we have the exact same freedoms as everybody else. So we're we're not on going to be under any yeah, restrictions. Yeah. Well, you know, we have we've, we've uh, anybody that's really interested in this issue, you know, we've gone online and we've looked at the videos, you know, and we're we're trying to watch things the best we can. You know, then we get we hear pushback from people. And, you know, when we see a video of some old lady being harassed by the police in the park and 
uh, you know, uh, because she's gone outside of her area, but she doesn't, or she doesn't have her, her vaccination card or whatever the excuse is, you know, it's just bullying people, basically. It's a, it's a show of power. And then you hear pushback from people who say, oh, that's old file footage. It's not really real. It's not really going on today and all these kinds of things. And there, see, there is such a disinformation campaign, I think, going on from Absolutely. both sides. And that's unfortunate. Uh, listen, I, I do know many times what you have to do to really find out what's true or at least uh, do it, it, to do the best you can. You have to look at a lot of material and you have to um, find out where there's corroboration. And even though then you don't necessarily have validation, you don't have proof, you just have corroboration. So you look at something, you go, well, you know, I've seen that 10 other places. So I think it's probably true. <laughs> You know, yes. when, when you get to that place. And, and the fact of the matter is, is, uh, you know, also just the shifting narrative. You know, if you like, you know, here in the U.S., people that in 2020 were saying there, there's, you know, vaccine passports are coming. Vaccine passports are coming. You won't be able to buy. You won't be able to sell. You won't be able to get on an airplane. You won't be able to travel to the next state without your vaccine passport. People called you a conspiracy theorist. Now... Yes. It, now, uh, in some circles, if you say, I think vaccine passports are a bad idea, you're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> so, <laughs> we can't so, win, can we? <laughs> now that, that may sound like an extreme example. It's a real example. It actually is going on. But the fact of the matter is, you know, uh, do look at these shifting narratives. And I would also say, of course, follow the money. And also, you know, here's one other thing, because you were saying about this judge, you think he's a fair judge, you think he's going to do the right thing, so forth and so on. And, you know, we've seen here in the U.S. so many of our public officials, uh, we believe that about them, when, but when it comes right down to push coming to shove and right at the last minute, they cave to the deep state. And um, right. you, you have to wonder at that point, who got to them? And were they threatened? Yeah. Were they bribed? Were they, you know, were they playing a game all along? You know, they, those kinds of things. But I'm, but I digress. So, <laughs> no, that's so true. Yes, we're we're looking at uh, vaccine passports that are only going to be in for yet yeah, a month, which Har is hardly her, hardly worth why you call it to set up such a system. You know, it just. None of it makes any sense whatsoever. No, no. They've spent well, colossal amounts of money to you, set up a system that's only going to be in place for four weeks. Yeah. You know, it's like that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. You know, you know uh, one, one wonders if actually that five weeks thing is sort of like two weeks to flatten the curve, you know? Yeah, and, well... And a yes. year and a half, and a year and a half later, <laughs> you know, the 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 curve that needs to be flattened is the stupidity curve. You know, I mean, it's just uh, get 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 that down to a bare minimum. <laughs> because, you're not you're not wrong. You're not wrong at yeah. all. It's it's they believe we'll be at ninety percent. That's why they can reopen the state. I see. Okay. Numbers. See. So. Um, Okay, I get it. Yeah, so once they've reached the numbers they want for the vaccines, there's no reason to keep the state locked down. Yeah, um, yeah. for for anybody, and um, it's you know people we do have a, a type of Stockholm syndrome going on here, so. You know, people are like, oh, yay, the government's going to let us go free again. It's like the government never should have had power to take the, those freedoms. The, from yeah, so, something's, something's wrong with that anyway. When you say the government's going to let us go free. Oh, the, should, that's exactly right. You know, it's like who, who told the government that they were in control of our freedom? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, listen, it, it should be. They had a right be. to. Control. It should be the people are going to let the government have power. That's what it should be. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. 
Hey, listen, uh, ju just uh, I want to get into to something here today yes. that uh, I'm really curious about. And I want to get more information on that. But before I get into that, let me just say this to everybody watching. You've already heard uh, in this interview today information about how people are being oppressed, how they're being persecuted, yes. being divided from one another, how people's lives have been ma uh, made worse off as a result of our responses or the responses of government to the COVID-19 and um, so forth and so on. And I want to just say to you, keep these people in your prayers. Um, we know in the body of Christ, there's only one body, okay? Only one Lord, right? So therefore, there isn't an American church and an Australian church. There's the church that uh, actually is on the earth in different parts of the globe. That's really basically it. So uh, anyway, listen, keep your brothers and sisters in prayer in particular, and just people in general. We want people to be better off. So I just wanted to get that in there. And uh, th I'll tell you what I wanted to talk about. Our first uh, talk together, Maya, you discussed the uh, origins of the coronavirus. And that was a great interview. And I appreciate that very much. And by the way, to anybody watching this, if you haven't heard that, go back and listen to it. Last time you were with us, you presented strong evidence suggesting that COVID-19 might be a computer model, okay? Now, yes. for those that were with, those that were not with us last time, explain why that's a plausible theory. And then I'd like to add, just ask you to continue from there. So I just wanna give you the floor and talk about this. Okay, yeah, so I've, I've found that out, I guess, two to three months ago so i had to go back refresh myself and you know just on the research that i had done because i don't tend to prepare for um our talks at all so i just go with what's you know trusting that i'm going to have the data that i need when 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 we sh when we speak but on this one i thought oh, i'd like to you know just refresh um my memory about um, the computer-generated sequencing, the genomic sequencing of the virus. And as, and I, t I will say to your listeners, Dr. Andrew Kaufman re is, I highly recommend that you listen to any interviews that he's done where he discusses this. So he's actually brilliant at breaking it all down and explaining exactly how it works and so he uh talks the 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 terminology that is used for this specific type of computer programming model it's called de novo assembly and so he goes into the uh the the starts pulling the data apart and he said this he said that it was like a frankenstein virus that they stitched together from a database that they already have of viruses and genomic sequences so sequences that they have in a database that they can draw from to say well this has similarities to this virus and this has similarities to that one but they were using short sequences and an atypical virus has between 20 and 30,000 base pairs. Okay, well, and, and why don't you explain what that means? So it just means that for a, a virus to exist actually is, it comes out as letters. And so it's like a, a, a sequence which is like an RNA sequence, and that makes up a virus genomic sequence. Okay. And China, had they had 150 base pairs. Now, I said in the last interview it was 37. I was incorrect on that, not in the sense of um, 30, it was 37 base pairs. 
it was the CDC in the in America that only had 37 base pairs. Okay. There was not enough of um, no lab has had enough viral um, sample to create the virus sequence. No lab in the world. So there's no material to work from. And Andrew Kaufman sort of likens, he, he, got, he gives this really good analogy. He says, when you try to solve a crime and you find fingerprints, it's great because you have a fingerprint, you know, and he goes, however, the fingerprints on their own are not enough. You actually right. need to know who the fingerprints belong to right. in order to identify the person who has committed a crime. Mm -hmm. So fingerprints on their own are useless unless you know who they belong to. And that's what's occurred here. We've got fingerprints, but no identifiable assailant that they've come from. So there's yeah. no virus sample that's isolated and purified to work with in order to have this where did the fingerprints come from? We don't know. We have no, we've got, fing, we've created fingerprints. We've yes. created a fingerprint structure, but yes. we don't know who it belongs to. <laughs> there's no. Now, now, now there's just, no, to, just to make sure. described yeah. it. So he yeah. said, it's like we've got fingerprints, but no assailant because we don't know who the actual fingerprint belongs to. And it's also a, just a genetic soup that they've stitched together and it's made up of uh, whatever sequences in their database that they could pull from. It's like, oh, there's some of that. And then they got another sequence from another, you know, and so on and so forth until they had a 30,000 long strand. Okay. So, all right. What are some of the sources? Okay. You mentioned it was stitched together from, from, various sources. What are yes. some of those sources? So the CDC has their, they've got their, they've actually done their paper on this, but they only had 37 base pairs. Okay. They didn't know that um, and they were fragmented. So they weren't actually a, a sequence of strands. They were fragmented pieces. And so then they had to create their own genomic sequence, but they used the Wuhan genomic sequence to find what worked for their 37 base pairs to create a, a very, it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, um, Wuhan sent us the puzzle. So now we can assemble the same virus but we don't actually have enough viral particles or sequencing to um to work with so they've had to create their own and then uh i think it's germany did their own as well and that's the in silico model that i was talking about someone's actually written a book about this okay. about how they use in silico gen, um computer programming to create essentially create the the entire genomic sequence of the virus using computers mm -hmm. um, okay um, I want to I want to so, ask you yeah go go ahead go ahead and then I want to ask you a question okay. yes so Wuhan when they put up the genomic sequence of the virus the reason why we know that that is fraudulent is because they called it a novel coronavirus when there is nothing novel supposedly about this virus it's nearly very similar to SARS-CoV okay so they're in the same family it's like supposedly 85 percent the same as original SARS coronavirus from like 2003 mm -hmm. um so that it's not novel it's not you know it's in the same sort of genetic makeup 
and then their their whole paper that they put out about this pneumonia that was circulating and how they found it and then they had these three patients and they took lung fluid well actually no when you read the paper which i did last night i was struck by a couple of things they had three patients they were from the wet market so this was when the bat story in the wet market was floating around so mm. this is how we know that the paper is likely fraudulent because of where their patients came from and how they supposedly came up with this genomic sequence of this virus and as they discussed these patients two of them recovered one died of these three patients However, they said no biopsies were taken mm. of the three mm. that were sick, right? So they talk about these three patients and then they say they didn't take samples from them. And I was like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> These are your three or these are yeah. grounds. These are, yeah, these are, this is your mom. These, these are your guys. Like these yeah. are supposedly your guys. Why did you not take samples from them? That doesn't make any sense. Not in medical terminology. Or You've got this brand new pneumonia that is supposedly starting to make the rounds. And these are your ground zero patients and you don't take samples from, you don't do any, like you take nothing from them. That doesn't make sense to me. No. Like it doesn't get better than those three original <laughs> patients, right? And then they had um, samples from another hospital where pneumonia patients were so mm. they could try and uh, compare them so they could compare them to be sure that supposedly this was a new type of pneumonia that was in these three but they didn't take any biopsies from those three and then all of a sudden they've just got these samples from i don't know where I don't know where. And then they tested them. Here was the thing. In order to test these um, samples that they did have, they have to grow the virus on cell cultures. Now, that, that's weird in itself. It and is. so Andrew Kaufman says, if someone has a virus, you should be able to take samples directly from the patient that is unwell with yeah. that virus yeah. and test that to, uh, you know, use the samples from the person. That's how you determine a virus is you must take the virus from the infected mm -hmm. and then... You shouldn't have to grow that. He's going, this is supposedly a really deadly virus. Right. You know, it's it's extremely deadly and it's extremely, you know, dangerous and it's going to kill all these people. He's like, well, if, if you're, you're talking about a virus like that, you shouldn't need to have to try to grow it on something that will support its growth. Right. And they tried to, they, they attempted to grow it on in vivo, which is um, monkey kidney cell lines. And then they had um, cell lines of animals mm -hmm. and then cell lines of humans. So a board of fetal tissue that is, used in, in in medicine and and it was lung tissue kidney tissue um adenovirus cells uh green monkey cells and 
and kidney cells from monkey as well. And the only ones that grew a type of virus were the animal cells, were the animal cells. So in the human cells that they attempted to grow the virus cultures on, it, it was negligible. Like there wasn't enough to say, oh, that's um, an identifiable virus. Mm -hmm. And on the lung cells that they used that were the human lung cells, they, it was not compatible. So SARS-CoV-2 was not compatible with human lung tissue, which shows two things. If a viral cell line is only able to grow on animal cell lines and not human ones, then it's not infectious to humans. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. Does they, that make sense? Yeah, they're, they're in, therein lies the pro therein the lies actual. the problem. Yeah. Yes. The problem is this. It's it's growing in it. They've they've and I wouldn't even say that it's growing. The problem is in the methodology that they use, they're yeah. adding toxic substances to these cultures to tr attempt to elicit some sort of toxicity response to grow a virus right and so uh, to create to to see what grows but with that the human cell lines it didn't it didn't work there was no wow. infection wow. in the lung tissue yeah uh, they could grow the virus in the lungs and supposedly we know SARS-CoV-2 apparently affects the lungs of yeah. Right. Well, whatever they tried to do didn't do that. Yeah. And then Germany came out and said, oh, this is a problem. We, we're going to have to try to recreate what they've done and see if this is, you know, what the deal is here. Because this, you know, and so they did it as well. And same results. Well, so, okay, if you go, if you go to some places, you know, uh, people keep apart from one another, they wear diapers on their face, they uh, make sure that uh, they're only around people that have been vaccinated, I mean, all these measures, right? You yes. would get the idea that uh, everybody is at risk for getting sick because of this uh, unknown, unseen virus at any moment, okay? Well, what you're discussing paints a little different picture. And, <laughs> yes. and, all right, let, and, and I want to just say this to everybody. First of all, you know, listen, some of this probably is a little bit hard to follow, and I understand and I sympathize with that. Don't get the idea in your head that you yourself have to come to all the conclusions, that you've got to figure this all out. You've got to become a medical expert expert that you've got to you know understand the the biochemistry and how the, all these things work what's important here is for you to get enough doubt in the official narrative that maybe you might just think a little bit for yourself and pray and determine your own course of action because the narrative that's been given to everybody points all of us towards you have to take all these precautionary measures and mm -hmm. not just not just today but for a long time to come because this i mean i'll tell you the whole world is under attack from this tiny virus and yes, uh absolutely. maybe yeah maybe it's not that way and you know <laughs> just just maybe we we've, we've okay. definitely we've definitely created conditions in which people can get sick so all of the measures that we've taken mm -hmm. and social distancing and wearing masks anytime you're outside of your home 
oh, I, I know that at one point they were trying to mandate that you had to wear masks even in your home, which was absolutely ridiculous. In but, the bedroom and everything. I mean, it's oh, <laughs> just, I just, no, there was just no, no, that's like way too far. They were actually creating conditions, um, excessive use of hand sanitizer. You know, yeah, it's yeah. Like we created conditions in which um viruses and sickness could explode yeah yeah we actually did it to ourselves through those those measures because see we're fearfully and wonderfully made mm -hmm. and god designed our immune system perfectly absolutely perfectly but we need one another Yes, we and do. And close contact. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, we need close contact with yeah, people yeah. because it actually helps our immune system. Yes, it does. To, uh, to work as it's supposed to. We need to be in contact with people. So the social distancing, the mask wearing where, it's, you know, you've got bacterial pneumonia becomes an issue when you're breathing in your own um you know carbon dioxide carbon monoxide yeah. it's mm -hmm. like you're breathing in right. fungal infection you're, you're interfering with your respiratory process yeah wearing these things and the moment you touch it you've automatically you, sh you should change it because we've, we've got incorrect mask use they yeah. don't work regardless to stop the transmission of respiratory viruses it's never been proven it's it, they don't help at all yeah no they don't at absolutely at not there the science has not changed on that and if the science changes on that the question i ask is who's funding the science yes so i don't look at the science now and i'm not even willing to read scientific papers until i know who has funded the study yeah, absolutely Absolutely. You know, that's the first question you have to ask when you are looking at something that stands out as an anomaly. And so they, they've they managed to manufacture, I think, one study that to say that masks help. But it's like you look at who funded that study and, of course, whoever funds the study gets the result. That they will just skew the data so sure. that you get sure. what results sure. you want because we want more funding to do research that we actually want to do. So yes, I'm willing to fund. I'm willing to do a study to show that mass work. If you're going to fund other research that I'm going to do <clears> down the track, you know, and it's like um, I call it junk science. It's junk it science. Look, and it, yeah, it's a sham. Like I call it science fiction. I don't. It is. I'm it not is. remotely interested in in looking at something to say. Oh, you mean the science changed so much <laughs> that all of those other studies that we've had for decades that prove beyond the shadow of a doubt when there was no uh, interest, there was no opposing interest, yes. there was no, you know, there was no. We didn't right. need to find out if masks worked or not. We just yeah. needed to know if they might help. Yeah, yeah. To stop yeah. The, yeah. The, the transmission of influenza or the transmission of um, RSV or any sort of. And when they found out, no, they don't. They don't help. They don't work at all. Then it's like, well, we should stop people from wearing them then because um, they do make you more susceptible to getting sick. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, look, look, there were scientific studies published in the middle part of the 20th century that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that cigarette smoking was perfectly safe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you you you're absolutely right. You have to look at who's funding this and who benefits from it. And exactly. a lot of time, a lot of times, what it's about is somebody wants to push a product and i'll tell you something else oftentimes i won't i don't want to get too far down this rabbit trail but sometimes it's all about uh somebody's got a surplus of something and this is the way to sell it well yes absolutely <laughs> you know i mean 
it's like it's no surprise that um, Pfizer has the top anti-clotting medication on the market. <laughs> yes. They are making a killing. Yes, they are. So it, they're like literally, which sounds terrible, but I mean, their vaccines yeah. are causing blood clotting. Yes. And, 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 and they just happen to have the best anti-clotting yes. medication. Yeah, that's on, right. Exactly. On, on offer, you know, so, so they are making an absolute absolutely. of absolutely. money. And everything is to do with money when it comes to pharma. They they are only interested in their next profit. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, of course, Pfizer's coming out with a, a product, a, a treatment, uh, an antiviral treatment for COVID that is, uh, funnily enough, a lot like ivermectin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, oftentimes uh, the pharmaceutical industry will do this. They'll take something very simple that we've known for a long time that works and they make, they make it into something very sophisticated like they just invented it and uh, with some additives. And it, yeah, it's, so, it's, it. yeah you know, look, uh, you know, if you want to get anti-malaria medicine uh, here in the United States, it'll probably cost you $20, $30 a pill. Uh, we've done these we've done these relief projects in Southeast Asia where we provide the same medicine there and we buy it over there and it will uh, you know it'll cost us 10 or 20 cents and uh, so it's it's the same kind of thing um, it's all it, it really has a lot to do with the money but listen I want to I want to get back to a couple of things because you know that this this is interesting how this works Um there is a system in place that wants to flip the narrative. You know, you said we're fearfully and wonderfully made. They would like things to be so that we're in wonder and we're and we're fearful instead. And uh, so it's so so we're instead of being fearfully and wonderfully made, we're wonderfully fearful. And uh, yeah. you know, we don't have to buy into that. Let's stay with the what the Word of God says understanding that God put the intelligence in the human body for it to create itself from a, a tiny cell into all of this intr intricate ecosystem that our bodies are. And uh, not only that, but if something happens to it, it knows how to fix itself. That's amazing. Yeah. See, is God is so smart, but we want to, we want to change that. And, uh, you know, if something goes wrong with the body, then at that point, we will replace that part or we will mask symptoms, which just creates a, a spiral of disease. But let me, let me I want to get back to uh, something else. Um, you said this earlier, and I just want to I, I just want to camp out there for a minute because you said that the virus has not been isolated. OK, yes. The virus has, okay, so I've heard different things. I've heard that it, that it is a virus, COVID-19. I've heard it is a bacteria from others. I've heard that it, it is neither, that it is simply a computer model. All right, now I'm not going, going to attempt to answer that question, but I want to get your thoughts. I think we renamed the flu. Okay. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm actually very serious with that. There I are many people who, are, who agree with you. Yeah. And, um, and the computer virus was put out as a colossal fraud. Okay. So you're saying that the... Well, it is a fraud, and we know that it is a fraud. The computer yes. genomic, the genomic sequence that came from Wuhan uh -huh. is a fraud. It's fraudulent, what they did, and that's why they actually took it back. So China got it back from the U.S. database this year. I see. They had it removed. And then when they were asked, when the CDC was asked about that, um, it was said that um, China wanted to use it for um, re to research for other partners that they were 
going into partnership with or which was absolute garbage because they had already put it out to the entire globe. So mm -hmm. who who didn't have access to it? You know, it was like whatever partnerships you had or, or wanted to have, well, you know, they would have already had access to that genomic sequence from you know, from the uh, from database that you uploaded it to, which went out to the entire globe. <laughs> so uh, that that became the blueprint for every lab worked with that model. Yeah, that yeah. was the problem. That's the problem with all of it. Every lab in the world has had that as the blueprint model to work from thinking that was the genomic seek or maybe they they didn't you know i don't know but that was the blueprint model yeah that they were working with and they hadn't taken it from actual viral sample so that original genomic sequence was taken they never had a viral the, the viral sample they never had enough virus to work with in the first place and it only grew on animal cell lines not human ones and the director for the chinese cdc he said well they never isolated the virus he actually admits because uh i think it was nbc's one of your um one of your big media outlets did an interview with him and they asked him well why hasn't the data been shared and he said well they never isolated the virus uh -oh. that's the issue <laughs> yeah and if the original is not that's what i said about fingerprints see yeah yeah that's what andrew kaufman said it's like they don't have an assailant to tie any fingerprints to. So there's actually no original viral sample. They never isolated the virus. Uh -huh. And therefore, no lab has been able to isolate that. They've never had enough viral sample. Because all I was thinking was, well, why haven't these other labs just gotten the virus from patients and, you know, done their own genomic sequencing from uh, victims in the, in the US or, you know, COVID patients in any other part of the world, why haven't they just gotten samples themselves from patients and created a genomic sequence from actual patients? With co and no, none have. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Isn't that? Like, I think that's amazing. Like, and then I was like, well, if this, if this is how this, how did they even test for SARS CoV, the original SARS COVID? Like, I'm like, if we don't have enough viral virus sample for SARS CoV 2, and, and the, the Chinese never isolated the virus in the first place, but they put up a genomic sequence of a virus for sure. Mm -hmm. But what was it for? Who, who knows? You know, like what what was that? You know, what, what was that genomic sequence even about? But if they never had, if they never isolated the virus in the first place, then what happened with SARS CoV? And how did they know that they, how did the PCR test and all of that come into play and so on and so forth? And then I started digging into SARS CoV and I, you know, I came across the paper and that's China as well. But <laughs> this is China as well, yeah. by the way. You know? yeah. So then, and I'm reading this paper and to be, and I'll be very frank, like I'm a mum, you know. And I will research, but I am not a scientist. Mm -hmm. But I have good comprehension skills when it comes to reading English. I can't tell you the science or the chemical. I, I can't do that. 
but I can read papers and get a pretty good grasp on what the information is saying yeah. or trying to communicate. So I read this paper and I'm like, hang on, no, that can't be right. I'll send it to people that I know are scientific and ask them the question that I thought was like, and, and I simply ask this, can you read this for me and tell me if they ever isolated SARS Cove? <laughs> the original the SARS original, yeah. coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And one of them came back to me with looking at this paper, no, they never did. Wow. So, so they never actually isolated. SARS coronavirus, even though they claimed that they did, they had to grow it again in monkey cells. So they create the virus, they did cultures on these monkey cells, and then they amplified the PCR cycles. And then once they had it at a, a level that they uh, thought was going to be adequate, they injected whatever had grown mm -hmm. into two monkeys who subsequently got sick. And then they claimed that that was isolated to Koch's postulates and that's not Koch's postulates. I yeah, like, yeah. No, that's yeah. not how that, that so, is not how that works. <laughs> okay. All right. So if this takes us in a different direction, then if there's uh, no SARS Cove, how is there SARS Cove too? Right, right. So uh if our search takes us in a different direction than the fact mm. that, or not the fact, but that that the you know the theory is that we have a virus that that is everybody is vulnerable to, no matter who you are, you're vulnerable to this and it's very deadly. And we have to be very careful because even asymptomatic people who carry this virus uh, could infect a bunch of other people and so forth and so on. And this is a pandemic. I mean, forget the fact that the death rate hasn't gone up. It's actually gone down, but this is a <laughs> pandemic. And so if- The pandemic if, uh, of life. <laughs> right. But the answer to all of this is stay away from people, uh, stay away from public places, uh, cover your face and your nose, you know, everything. And uh, be sure to get the jab, not just once, but twice, not just twice, but three times, you know, however many, however many times we got to keep going back and getting the jab. Just keep on getting the jab until you can't get the jab anymore. And I'm not going to mention uh, when that when you determine that is but um at any rate uh so so that's the answer to all these things so um yeah. could it i mean could it be just possibly that the real point in all of this is not to stop a virus but to get you to take all of these measures so if the, if supposing that the supposing what this is all about is to get you to take all these measures that i just mentioned and more Right. And of course, be afraid, you know, got to be afraid because this is deadly. So uh, uh, the pandemic is psychological. Yes, it, it absolutely does. It's a psychological. Right. And, and, you know, for some for some people uh, that that ends up in divorce, it ends up in, uh, you know, abuse yes. in of drugs. It ends up in suicide, all kinds of things. But don't worry about that. We're, we got to stop the virus. Um, so anyway, so we're, we're after all these measures, right? So what would, what do you think might be the purpose of all of these measures? Well, they, I mean, aside from we've created now an environment for, for viruses to, well, explode really. Yeah. So it's, I mean, they keep talking about children are now being affected by COVID, you know, Delta variant is affecting the young and so on and so forth. We've, we've kept children out of school yeah. and we kept them locked up at home and we made them wear masks. We have not in Australia that hasn't come into um, 
affect children have not been mandated to wear masks. But there's been an explosion of RSV, which is a respiratory virus that children would get. But they're renaming that COVID. Yes, of course. So children are being hospitalized with a respiratory virus because RSV is, it can, it can be dangerous. It's dangerous for, especially for babies, for infants. And so they can die from RSV. But they're talking about, you know, there's children who are very sick and they're being hospitalized with COVID. Those children don't have COVID, they have RSV, yeah. which does hospitalize children. And the reason for that is we kept kids home and they don't play with one another at school and they're not interacting and their immune yeah. systems yeah. need to interact with other children in order to get healthy and to function. And yeah. this is where you're training your immune system to fight virus. But if you're locked in a house, not seeing your friends, not connecting, not having that, we need to be in constant contact because that's what trains our immune system to operate and function optimally. Of course, you're gonna get sick. You're going to get very unwell. So the moment you're released and you go back to, oh, you know, we had schools reopen and then all of a sudden kids are getting sick and it's like, yes, of course they're going to get sick. They've been locked in a house for a year and then, you know, and then we've just sent them all back. And now and now we've got, we've created a recipe yeah. of disaster. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, yeah. it's just disastrous. So um, I know that New Zealand had an RSV outbreak um, that they've, they've had, you know, RSV was in the US and they were trying to say that it was COVID. Um, we've had RSV going around here and it's like, well, we know that lockdown has caused that. It's not COVID because the Delta variant, while highly infectious, is still less fatal than COVID. So the, whatever, the mutation is less severe. So children who haven't been really affected by COVID at all in the whole time are now suddenly, you know, getting sick with Delta. Yeah, no, I don't think that's correct. You know, so I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. It's they, They're obviously not getting Delta variant. They've got, yeah, they've got, yeah. Um, something yeah. they've got a, yeah. an yeah. RSV, you know, they've got RSV, which is dangerous. Influenza is dangerous for kids. Mm -hmm. Influenza will kill children, you know? So um, if, if, they, if they get the actual flu, they're going to get very, very unwell, yeah. you know? So whereas, yeah, supposedly, you know, with... And that should have been that should have been our sort of first alarm bell should have been ringing with this whole pandemic was that children were not really affected by it. Mm -hmm. You've got this deadly virus that discriminates against children because children tend to not have any real issues or problems with this virus. And it was like, it's clearly like, I mean, coronaviruses are uh, colds. <laughs> you know, that's, they're, they're in the cold virus family. That's it's the family of cold viruses. So, but, but children were literally, like, not even having symptoms. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I've never it's seen a, a virus ever do that in the wild. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. Where it's like, I've never heard of a virus. Like, in the Spanish flu, it wasn't that, you know, like, everybody in the house died except the children. You know, it's like, yeah. everybody died. <laughs> it just didn't, it didn't, yeah. 
viruses don't discriminate in that way, you know? No, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So and, it's like, and, we and should have been asking yeah. questions back then going, hmm. Just something yeah, there's, see, there's a, you know, one, one thing that people need to not do in the midst of all this barrage of propaganda is don't lose your mind. You know, don't, I mean, you know, think, sure. think a little bit, think. And, I think uh, that it's like people should, we should have come to a point where we're nearly two years down the track from mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. where people are actually, you know, should be at the stage where they're going, something just doesn't seem right with this story anymore. Well, right. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely we true. At least be at that place. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where even the most hardened COVID um, person that, you know, is still in, very much into the narrative mm -hmm. should be at this stage going. Something isn't know. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Something, you know. something is not right with this right, story right. anymore. You know? Yeah, you know, listen, we're, there people, are gonna, people are going to be commenting in writing books and producing documentaries for a long time to come, because there's a lot of uh, varied information all wrapped up in this whole uh, pandemic. And I think, you know, there's a lot of rabbit trails we could go down right here, but there's also so many other social issues and political issues and economic issues that are related to this. There is a lot riding on the coronavirus. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, I believe so, like, you know, they want to bring in the Great Reset. Sure, sure. They want to bring in Agenda 21, Agenda 30. Absolutely. And I know that people talk about that as being like a conspiracy theory, but that is UN. It, it, it's, it's, there is, it exists. This is, it's sure. reality. This is, there, there is a UN Agenda sure. 21. 30, the World Economic Forum sure. ran the simulation for the modeling for a coronavirus pandemic, you know, in October of or September of 2019. So just months before the outbreak occurred, you know, and what the response would be to a pan sure. to a global pandemic. And then all of a sudden we're in a global pandemic, not even two to three months later, you know, and it's like, Come on. Well, I, I will, you know, listen, I, I don't know what your view is, Maya, but my view is that it's not working as well as they wanted it to. I believe that they've tried to do too much too fast. Absolutely. And, and that while we are less, we have a less critical thinking public nowadays. Mm-hmm we're still not all, um, you know, completely. We're, we're not dummies. Uh, you know, yeah, we weren't born enough, yesterday. There's still enough resistance yeah, yeah. to question the narrative. And yeah. instead of backing off, they actually doubled down. Sure. You know, so yeah. Instead of, like, Which is crazy. oh, my gosh, we found out and, you know, the people know the truth, instead of, like, going okay we need to retreat <laughs> well, look, you know look, I, ease yeah. ourselves out of this somehow they just doubled down and they True. continue to push the same things that we they already know we know <laughs> that 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 is, doesn't work so True. um True. Uh, it's it's yeah it's quite a bizarre because to me i believe that the the real issue is going to be the vaccine sure Absolutely. and that i believe that you know this was manufactured to bring in an actual biological weapon yes which we're in, having injected into our systems um and unfortunately um as as the data is going to reveal over time like uh, as more and more data comes out i mean pfizer doesn't have to produce their safety data until 2025 and 2027. Wow. You, 
You know what I mean? And that's yeah. just and what they're doing that's, today. That's yeah. just Pfizer because they're the only ones that have been given conditional approval by the FDA. Yeah. Right. Right. So only the Pfizer vaccine has that. The others are still operating under an emergency use authorization only. And and so Pfizer is the only one that actually has to produce that data. The others don't because they haven't yet been given conditional approval. When they get conditional approval, then they will have to provide their safety data too. Except mm-hmm. it's, it's like we're not going to have it until we see the fallout. Yeah. You know, as we we know what the short term safety data is, and it's not good. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. And it will it will build up from there. Listen, I, I thoroughly believe that Satan always overplays his hand. Oh, you know, he's the worst card. Yeah, you know, look. <laughs> you know, a good a good mili- a good military he absolutely always does. Yeah. Uh, yes, he does. A good military strategist, when uh they're ha- when you're having trouble taking a particular uh field of ground or uh, area or area of geography. What you do sometimes is you have to fall back, regroup before you go forward again. But the new world order, the cabal, the deep state, whatever you want to call them, they're not always doing that. It's like they're bent on this thing and they have to make it uh, uh, come about right now. And quite frankly, I think that's part of their downfall. And uh, again, I know some people are not the same same way or have or are of the same mind, but I'm optimistic. I am looking for things to completely turn upside down and, and around. And yes. I, I think we're going to be head, yeah, I think we're going to be heading headed in a different direction. And I also I, I believe so too. But the, uh, I'm I'm like there's a lot of damage that has been done especially economically that's that's going to be a a massive undertaking to to try to get us out of the mess that they have created amen but i am i'm 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 with you in the sense of the enemy always overplays his hands when 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 he does things in a subtle way it could almost seem imperceptible that you wouldn't notice until he just does that one last thing. And it's almost like a, wow, you nearly, you nearly would have got away with it if you had it. Yeah, in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, it's like you nearly would have got away with doing all of that mm-hmm. if you hadn't have just done that one last overstep of it. And it's like, and Man, it's like now it's really obvious that it's you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise you just God. Just expose yourself, you know. And, um, and, and I believe that God has definitely used this time to expose a lot of things, even in the body. Oh, yes, that's true. in the body of Christ. That begins that's with true. us first. I mean, that's these true. men, they put on the church. So the church was over here. It was like, um, you know, you can't have worshippers in the house of God unless they've been double vaccinated and they've got their vaccine passport and so on and so forth. And and then uh, there was a petition put for not not even a petition, but like a declaration by a Christian um, team who put together this Ezekiel declaration for church leaders to sign in this country and church and Christians. And so it generated a lot of, um, you know, to, against these kinds of mandates, you know, mm-hmm. which is too right. We should be yeah. on board with, yeah. with things that encroach on, on people's freedoms. I mean, like, you know, Jesus said, like, he whom, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Yes. Right? And he says, stand fast, therefore, yes. in the liberty by which Christ has made you free and do not become entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Amen. Right? And so all of a sudden we've got these yokes, these chains, these shackles yeah. Yeah. that they're attempting to put on the church. Yes. And then the church, uh, uh, certain members of the church decided to stand up 
And then certain other churches came out to attack yeah. the Christian brothers and sisters that had put this yeah. declaration up, right? And try to, and it's like, well, isn't that interesting? And it's like you say, just give them enough rope. They just explo- expose themselves in the end, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah. why would we prevent someone from coming to Christ? from coming into God's house to worship. Yes, yes. Good question. Good you question. Like, yeah. We cannot do that. That's, you know, like we cannot do that. There's yeah. nothing in the Bible that would remotely back up yeah. anything. Look, it, you know, it, it's one thing if you live in a society that is not free to worship, Okay. I, I, I can, I'm a little more sympathetic to that kind of a scenario, but when you live in a free country, all right, yeah. I'm trying, I'm, I'm not talking about sort of the, you know, what's going on on the ground right now. I'm talking about uh, a nation that is based on freedom and that's yes. part of your national DNA, like yours, like mine in that kind of situation. And then you have pastors saying the Holy Spirit uh, dealt dealt with the leadership team with the eldership, and he said to go ahead and obey the the lockdowns. So you're telling me that God told you to do something that is illegal, unconstitutional, and unscriptural. Really, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I question that. Okay, I, I would too. Because, and uh, <laughs> I I I'm sorry. I'm not with you. And I love you, you know, I, I'm glad we're, we're going to the same eternal reward, but I'm, you know, you, that is actually cooperating with an antichrist spirit. <laughs> so, yes, it's so true. It's, I mean, we see so many um, examples of this in scripture too. I mean, it's just Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you know, it's like, it, it, uh, they it's, um, who were willing to stand up against the laws that had been yeah. implemented. Yeah, that was yeah. they violated a far higher law that they were subject to. Yeah, you know, and it's like we are subject to a far higher law than any in natural operation, you know? Yeah. And it's like, uh, we cannot, we cannot submit under something that actually violates God's word. Amen. No, we and can't. You know, decree, right? It's like God holds two things in, in high esteem, two things that have the most highest value to God his name and his word. Yeah. Yeah. He will not violate his word to to uh, make us feel more comfortable about things, you know. And it's like, I'm sorry, but that that that's the standard. That's the standard. Is what what he says goes. So. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. Amen. And, you know, look, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not even living in a free society. And no, yet, no. and yet they, they were, and yet they obeyed, obeyed God rather than men. Okay. Yes. But here we are living in a free society and we're, obe- we're obeying unjust laws that we know are wrong and not based on anything real. They're arbitrary just because we think they're temporary, we go ahead and we obey it anyway, and we actually give weight to uh, the un- the uh, unjust edict. I don't I don't even call them laws. They're not laws. They're just um, decisions by people who don't even have the authority to make those decisions 100%. constitutionally, legally. Yeah. They don't even have the authority, and yet they they seize the power anyway. And we go along with it and support it. Listen, these people laugh behind our backs when we do that. 
You're right. And I'm going to do a video on that. And, you know, listen, I don't, I don't, I'm not always out to win friends and influence people, right? I want, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not out to offend anybody on purpose, but look, we need truth right now. I, uh, I'm a hundred percent with you. On yeah, that. We, we need truth. We don't need to, we don't need to just be nice. Sometimes, yeah. you know, think, thinking that, well, if we're just be nice, then we can win more souls. Actually, you might be off the planet, number one. Uh, secondly, you won't be able to travel uh, the globe to preach the gospel, uh, as many of us are called to do. And uh, thirdly, a lot of people are just laughing at you because, oh, because they know you're compromising. Oh, and, and, you know, and then people, you know, they, they say, oh, I think it's such a bad witness. And I think it's such a thing if we don't do... Um, what the government says and and you know if we don't get the, and and I've actually heard people say things along these it's a bad witness to my family you know and and so on and so forth and I I liken it to this when Jesus said that um, you know that the word the word of God says that the world will know you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like he says that. Mm -hmm. But notice he doesn't say, and therefore everybody will love you and then want to join. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So he says they will know you. You'll be marked by the love that you have for one another and that's how the world will know you. That's right. But he never says there and then they'll be attracted to you and they're going to want to join the club because he goes club. on to say right. you're actually going to be hated. Yeah. The world will hate you and persecute you and deliver some of you up to death. Yeah. Listen. Right. Um, and so it and, and so like I look at it like people go, oh, they you know, the world's going to want to, and, and I'm like, people just only fall into one of two categories, I'm afraid, when it comes to us dealing with people. We're either the stench of death to some, or we are life-giving aroma. Yes. That yes. brings up to eternal life. Yes. That's it. That's true. Exactly. That's, that's it. When we bring, when we preach the gospel, we're either the stench of death to some or we're in a life-giving aroma mm -hmm. there's no other categories that's what the categories are and we should stop trying to be a life just a life-giving aroma we need to actually accept that not everyone wants to join that's right you know? that's right and, and to be not concerned by that because some will. Yeah. Because the gospel was the gospel of Jesus Christ is foolishness to those who are perishing. Uh huh. That's right. You know, it's foolishness to those who are perishing, and we are the sense of death to those people. But to those who are being saved, yeah. we are a life-giving aroma. You yeah. know, and so we exactly. need to always reconcile in our hearts. Hey. Not everyone's going to like us, and that's okay. It is. Because they hated him first. And why would we think for one second that we're somehow deserving a better treatment than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? You know, and it's like. Good question. Well, Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. It's like. Yeah, I, I, I do know, know what you mean. The same deal as our master. So we should be prepared for that. Amen. Amen. You know, you're, you're so right. See, truth is, a, <clears throat> you know, love is on the side of truth. See, love is not a feeling. Love is based on truth. If I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't say I'm going to be mean to you or be overbearing or harsh or anything like that. But I'm going to tell you the truth. See, That's and the, the idea that loving a person is making that feel person feel better all the time. Try that on your kids and see how they <laughs> end up. Yeah. See? You're, I'm just going to make them feel good all the time and I, because I love them. No, you, you don't love them at all. 
The Bible says you hate them. <laughs> yeah, it does. It says you hate the, you know, you, you, if you withhold the rod, right? The, the rod doesn't make them feel good, <laughs> but the, the rod is loving. And it's the same thing now. People need to tell the truth. All right. Absolutely. And, and yeah, now it, look, the truth is not going to make every, it's, it's not a feel good thing. It's not about your feelings. That's absolutely correct. I mean, you, you said it in the beginning of this discussion where you said, if you knew what was coming, yeah, you mentioned 9-11. Yeah. You know, how would you have prepared those for, well, you know, yeah. what was coming? Mm -hmm. And it's, this, it's the same scenario. We know ultimately what is coming. You know, we, we ultimately know what is coming. Yes, And I think of it like this too. Noah didn't stop preaching for the entire hundred odd years yeah. that he was building the ark. Yeah. Right. But I bet his message was completely different on the last day when he went into the ark <laughs> than it was on that first day. It's true. So like, it's like, as as the time gets closer, the message gets more urgent. And yes, then we does. start to get a little bit Amen. more, you know, we're more passionate because we we know what is coming, see. So it's not like um it's like trying to tell people that the house is going to burn down when it's not yet quite on, you know, it's just a little smoking ember. And yeah. then as it starts to get fed we start to get more panicked and it's like mm -hmm. um, the house is on fire. We need to do something about that. And then it starts to, you know, and then it takes off even more. And by the end of it, we're not even nice anymore. We're yep. actually yelling and screaming at people to get out before they die because that's the, that's the kind of, yes. you know, it's like, yes. it's like, it's like we tried nice <laughs> you know, we 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 and and I'm I'm not you know saying that we we shouldn't um be nice and we shouldn't be um, right, right. kind, but um you don't um it's it's like our message needs to change because yes in in doing all of the nice we we kind of came to a place where we rendered ourselves irrelevant yes that's exactly right there is a, a great blog written by mario murillo uh for those oh, yes uh, i follow he, him yes he, he, he right. wrote it he wrote a thing recently called you are now a wartime pastor and he taught see i've been saying that for a long time that there's too many christians right now that have a peacetime mentality in a, in a time of war. And that's the way you're dealing with, the, with the, the battlefield is you're dealing with it just as if you were back in the time of peace. You know, if you have a peacetime mentality in a time of war and the shells and bullets are flying, that can get you killed, all right? That, that can be the that can be the recipe for the not only the end of your life, but the end of the life of lives of those around you. So therefore, you have to understand you have to be like the sons of Issachar who understood the times and deal with the situation the way it really is. And the way it really is, is there the, we are we Absolutely. are in, we're in the, yeah, we're in World War Three. That's yes. what we are. Okay, now yeah. it's, it's being fought on a different front than World War I or World War II, but we're in a world war. That's what's going on. And we need to deal with this as if people's lives are at stake, not like people's feelings are at stake. Now, it's nice if we can make them feel good too, but that's yes. secondary. I actually, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. So anyway, great yeah. you. Anyway, uh, praise God. You know, I think this is a good place for us to pin this discussion, and we've gone yeah. for a little while. And for yes. anybody that's listened to the whole thing, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're amazing. You really are. But uh, 
you know, I, I think this has been rich. I think it's been good. I think it's been very fruitful. I think it's the best of the three interviews I've done with you, Maya. And I really appreciate <laughs> your time. I, I want to just take a moment and uh, just, just pray for you and then ask you to close in prayer for the audience and for what's going on right now. So is that okay? All right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you right now for our time together. We just pray, Father, that everything that's been said that has the, the touch of God on it will remain with the people who've listened. And I thank you for everyone, Father God, who has listened to the words that have been spoken today, Father. Pray that they've been challenged. Pray that they've uh, been lifted up. Pray that they've been encouraged. And pray that they've been strengthened with boldness to speak your word. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. I pray for Maya and her family. Again, Lord God, I pray that uh, you would return to her all of the contribution that she has made to this audience and to the body of Christ at large. I pray, Lord God, that you would, uh, Father, just anoint these books that she's writing, that you would get right in the midst of that helper to say every sentence, Lord God, just as you would have it spoken uh, through the, the printed page. And I just want to thank you for it. I just thank you, Lord, that you have good days ahead for her and her children and Lord, her whole family. I just praise you, Lord God, that she is being a blessing. I thank you, Lord, that you're building respect among family members, Lord, that maybe have not been as respectful up to this point, but Lord, you're turning their hearts, you're dealing with them. And I thank you that you're doing that with others in the, this audience who have faced similar challenges with family who have questioned things that have been said. So I just praise you, Lord God, that Jesus is being glorified. I thank you for his soon return. We don't know when it is, whether it's next week or whether it's a, a year from now or a hundred years from now, but we just thank you, Lord, that you are equipping us to occupy until he comes. And Lord, it's in his name that we pray in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead. Thank you, Father. Just um, ask that in this day that you would restore wisdom yes. to your Lord. Lord. And that, that wisdom that we know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That you would restore to us a sense of fear and awe in mm -hmm. who you are, Lord, especially to us in this time, that, that we would become aware of just how great and how mighty and how and awesome and incredible that you are, yes. that our eyes would be fixed on you and that you would restore vision to your body right now, Lord, that, that we would begin to have uh, the ability to see things uh, from a different vantage point, Lord, yes. that you would begin to elevate Hallelujah. our vision so that we would have a okay. clearer understanding of what is ahead and that you would equip us, equip us to do your will to perform your will in this earth lord as it is in heaven and that you would be with us and that you would that you would strengthen us by your grace you would empower us by your grace yes. and that you would have uh, uh, that you would you would be with us you will show us and direct us in the way that we should go you will yes. you will teach and instruct us on the journey you will guide us with your eye you will be with us lord you will go ahead of us lord. you are both the god that precedes us and proceeds us ahead of us behind us to the side of us you're with us yes no matter what point of the journey that we're on but that you would be with your people at this time and that you would begin to restore the joy of your salvation to your people as well, yeah. that we would begin to remember, Lord, that we don't need to have fear. We do not have to have a fear of death for we know who we belong to yeah. and we know where we are going and we know whose we are, which is yours. We are your inheritance and therefore just restore the joy of your salvation. That way we can share that from a place of joy and not a place of fear with others, Lord, and that your people would begin to operate with clarity uh, 
as you give wisdom to us and and knowledge is power but when it's coupled with your wisdom then we can truly see change come yes Lord. and these things i would ask that 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 they we would bring glory to you in this yes. day that you would Thank be you, glorified lord, lord in the earth again that you would be high and lifted up yes. high above all powers and principalities that are an operation at the moment but that you would begin to bring them under your foot again yes father and okay. these things we ask and we pray in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Seems like it's gotten a little bit brighter over there since we started. Maybe the sun's yes. coming up more. So praise God. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. But uh, anyway, praise the Lord. We've got. Past, and I think we're meant to get a. We're having a, a lot of rain today. So. I see. Okay. Praise God. Well, very, yeah, very good. Listen, uh, we're we're gonna wrap this up. And again, thank you so much, Maya, for just sharing uh, so much relevant information. And just sharing your heart with us. And we appreciate that very much. So praise God. Uh, I just uh, want to ask uh, everybody to be sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with other people and comment and, uh, you know, keep it nice, but to comment and, uh, you know, I'm not worried you, about yeah. the, the, the comments. Don't worry me. Yeah, well, actually, I, will, as well actually as I haven't, I actually, I haven't gotten that many, but uh, at, at any rate, um, we, you know, we appreciate your comments. We really do. And also, of course, subscribe, uh, YouTube and BitChute, and uh, we ought to be using other platforms too, but we haven't gotten there yet. So praise God. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, see you next time. And uh, the Lord bless you real good. Just remember that you are God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. So we'll talk, talk to you later. Bye for now. Amen. See you later. All right. Praise God.